Meanwhile, in the Mpumalanga province, a merger between Mjendi and Mbombela municipalities will take place after the 3rd of August polls. One of the consequences of this merger is that Burgerville and Barberton wards will merge into one bigger ward. Now, currently, each ward is governed by two different parties. With the merger competition to run the ward is fierce between the ANC and the Democratic Alliance and other parties. Uh, SA Decides reporter Sindisi Wetwala is standing by with some of the parties competing uh, for that specific ward. Let's go live to Sindisi now. Good morning to you, Sindisi Where You're in Barberton in Mpumalanga province. Just talk us through uh, the implications this merger has. I mean, there's some pros, there's some cons for different and various political parties. Just talk us through it all. A very good morning to you, Abigail, and the viewers at home. Yes, we're in Burgerville, Barberton, where the implications of the amalgamation that is soon to take place after August 3rd will be both positive and negative, like you made mention. Um, this particular ward that we're in, Ward 9, will be merged with Ward 7, which is run by the ANC, and Ward 9, run by the Democratic Alliance. Both this merger will make sure that this particular ward will be turned into Ward 42. It will not only cover this particular ward and Ward 7, but other parts as well. So implications such as this could be positive and negative, but residents here are also complaining about their own issues such as unemployment, drug abuse, housing. The list is basically endless. But I have residents with me who are also going to be giving their insight on how exactly life here in Ber Burgerville is for them. I have I Yanda what's on my side could you please tell us exactly how life is here and what are the implications uh, that you guys living here is having on you guys oh here in Katanga we are a very small community and we are not recognized by many there is a lot of unemployment right here most of us we finished grade 12 but we are still sitting at home every time when we need jobs it's like they're taking their own family we don't know what to do anymore but because we work as a team. Everything will be right for us. I also have another resident on my side, Terrell, who's also going to be telling us what exactly is plaguing this community. What exactly is affecting you guys? Well, uh, I would like to say the first basic problem we have here is housing. There's a lot of people that are cramped up in a lot of houses, so we are a lot in, in each in homes. Uh, number two, there's, there's, there's very little things, facilities for the children. The facilities that we used to have have been vandalized and things and have been made given promises and stuff and nothing has been done about the promises so uh, and and another thing jobs we don't have jobs no jobs and there's there's a whole lot of drug activities going on here and things are very poor it's it's very poor here in this place in burgerville as a whole Earlier on, we spoke to residents just before we went live on the broadcast where one resident particularly said that uh, uh, their race, race has also uh, gotten into um, unemployment in the area. She says that as much as the municipality will hire specific people, race has gotten in. When people apply, it's the surname that's looked at, and because of that, people are not given jobs. But I also have the Democratic Alliance in the area that has been running for the past five years in this particular war to tell us what exactly they've been doing to assist people in unemployment and what they are planning to do moving forward. I have with me the Democratic Alliance Ward Councillor candidate who was also running in the previous election who's going to be telling us, Ms. Jacobs, please tell us exactly what exactly is happening here. Yes, um, Cindy, it is true that a lot of people apply for, for government positions and jobs and it is a fact that uh, many of these people staying here were shortlisted at some stage for positions at the hospital. And then nepotism took place, the HOD of Health came in with their own list and employed people there. So a lot of these people were denied the opportunity. People is applying for work at, poli at the police station and all over. And I don't know why, but they don't get the opportunities. In terms of projects in the ward, um, since 2006 I'm the ward councillor for this particular area and from 2006 for the last seven years we took the biggest chunk of the budget on the MIG ground to replace all the asbestos water pipes in this ward and in this case when, when there's uh, projects then we came in 
to the communities and we get people and not going and ask them produce your DA card and then we will give you opportunity. I'm going to the indigenous people and we give them opportunities. In that time that the people was, when the projects was running, people from Bergerville were employed but at the currently there is not other projects going on in the in the ward except the water treatment plant that they are in the process of upgrading where there will be again opportunity for the people to get uh, again work in local government otherwise um, the people if they really want change they need to vote actually for the whole uh, new Mbombela so that we can get a change as you have heard, strong words from a current ward candidate and previous ward councillor. But I also have uh, Mr. Ngosi from the African National Congress, which, which, which is also running Ward 7, which is soon to be joined with Ward 9 to make it Ward 42, as to exactly what they will do moving forward, should they be elected in this bigger ward, to bring change, to bring employment to people of this particular place. A very warm welcome to you. Could you please tell us what change as the African National Congress will bring to this particular ward. Uh, let me first greet all of you. As we have already said, that this community, dominantly, they are unemployed. The only thing that we must first do, we need to have a household profile. As they have said themselves, that each and every house, there are about more than 10 living in these small houses. These are the things that we need to correct. Those things we should be able to engage with the provincial government that these houses, some of them must be given stands of which already as the INC led government. We have identified land where we are going to be able to put them. One of the land we are, we are proposing that we should be able to close down the soccer field that is at the end the Indian area and behind the, 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 the general hospital. So that is where we'll be pushing them to go. Then the issue that relates to unemployment. You see, let me bring uh, uh, the history. Because it's very much important to understand. This area, economical in Pavaton, was very much viable. But when Nespread was growing, if you go to the Indian area, we had shops that were functioning very well. But when Nespread was growing, so more people moved to Nespread, so they shut down their shops. What we are planning to do is that we need to open a road link between Chagastad and Babaton, where people should no more go to, Nes to Nespread, they should come to Babaton. Then we'll be able to uh, boost the economy because now as we are saying that uh, we are merging the current budget of the municipality is very much small it's 43 million so now we should be able to be saying as we are merging with Mbombela the budget will be about two or to six hundred billion rands so we'll be able to improve as a municipality and in an infrastructure then we'll be able to implement these programs let me rest there for now uh, I also have uh, Mr. Samuels from the, the EFF. Um, it's a relatively new um, party in this area, but uh, he's going to be speaking from his point of view. They are keen on taking this ward and what change they are going to be bringing should they be elected. Good morning, Cindy. I'd like to say good morning to the community, good morning to South Africa, and thank you for the opportunity. Cindy, we as the EFF, we make a plea to the community of Burgerville, Barberton, South Africa, but especially Burgerville because we're standing here, for change. Vote for the EFF for change and we will, we, will, we will provide spacious and proper housing, housing for the community. We plan on cleaning up Burgerville, cleaning up these dirty streets, this broken glass that lies all over the place. Infrastructure, we lack infrastructure in Barberton, in Burgerville, especially here. That, that's why we set up problems of, of, of drug problems, because the youth in Burgerville have nothing to do. There is no infrastructure. We had swimming pools and tennis courts that were here by the previous government. And when the, the new South Africa took over and all these things just died, we have nothing left here. We have, we have no, 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 nothing to do. And the, as, as the EFF, at the park, the park exactly, we have a park up the road there and everything's broken. There's not one swing that works, a slide doesn't work. And we as the EFF, we're going to bring change. And, and that's my plea to, to the community of Burgerville, Cattyville, all former Indian and colored South Africans of South Africa, of South, so communities in South Africa that are being marginalized. Vote for the EFF. Vote for change. You've heard different political parties vouching that should they be brought back in power, should they be put in power for Ward 42, they will bring change. But what will determine this is each and every person's vote. Back to you in studio. Indeed, thank you very much, uh, Cindy Seaware, for that update.